And our next speaker is currently teaching science to high school students. However, she is still deep down at the audience at heart. We have the opportunity of hearing her personal story of handling change throughout her career. Please welcome Susie Urbaniak. Thank you, Sabon, for asking me to talk today. Education to employment. I'm passionate about resources literacy. I'm also passionate about helping the students, my students, students throughout Western Australia, to realise their true potential, their diversity of talents that they have. They're hidden away in this box, away from industry. My main thing is to break down the barriers between industry and education so that these kids who have this diversity of talent are able to uh, prosper into the future. I have been STEMing science, technology, engineering and maths for about eight years. STEMing or STEM has been only come popular in the last year or two years. Our education system, oh God, I'm going to get in trouble saying this, needs an overhaul. It really does. It's based on traditional conservative practices. Our kids are diverse. They're 21st century future leaders. We need to educate them that way. So, hi, I'm Susie and I love rocks. Yes, rocks. Some people think I am crazy. Well, they're right. But I also think I am crazy myself. I challenged myself last year. I took myself to a place where there was no rocks, no volcanoes. <laughs> However, within a day I found myself analysing the fascias on buildings, the pavings on the, uh, the tiles on the pavers on the floor. Oh yes, this is a metamorphic rock, probably from India. Granulite passes metamorphism, yep. So, good on you Singapore for showcasing rocks and their beauty but I'll never do that again. I'll always go to places with rocks and volcanoes. So, this is my story, geologist to teacher. Don't get me wrong, I could go back and sit on a rig and lick rocks, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and I miss it, but I'm not ready to go yet. So this is about lifelong learning. It's about how change affected my life. I didn't want to be a teacher. Teacher was not on the, on the list, not at all. But it was, I had to go there, personal issues. <laughs> when Spina asked me to do this, oops, sorry. <laughs> when Spina asked me to do this, it was about change. I sat down and I reflected upon it. I thought to myself, change. There is a spectrum of change, or there has been for me. At one end, it's called force change, or what I call force change. And it occurs when your whole system falls apart for no apparent reason. The environment is the major controller. Then there's arm change. It's when you're feeling good about yourself, or you've got some of your confidences happening, and you're working with the environment to initiate change. And then there's the initiated change. That flow line, that you're feeling good about it, you're feeling confident, You've got a team behind you. Initiated change. And I think that's where I'm at at the moment with my education. So I'll tell you my story. So I've gone from this, from acquiring knowledge in rocks. That's pretty... Um, hi, hi, Nikki. I worked with Nikki at Telfox. This is a, under the Telfox high wall. Not very safe to this. <laughs> Sharing rocks. And here I'm talking about climate change. That's another thing that I don't want to discuss at this stage. But... Yeah, sharing my um, rock knowledge and creating geoscience literacy. Rocks have been my pilot from the age of eight. I grew up on the edges of the Western District Volcanic Plain in Victoria. I had basalts and zeolites in my backyard. I changed my passion into my vocation. There was nothing going to stop me. I was on that pathway to be a geologist. So I journeyed on through university. And yeah, I topped the class, all men, there was a couple of other girls, but mainly I topped the class, first class on it, was a whole, whole lot, nothing was going to stop me. Not even the professor when he said to me, I was doing my honours and I was running around the department bare feet and he said, CRA were coming in to interview and he said, Susie, I think you should reconsider. 
you shouldn't go into mining, it's not a woman's world. And I said, no, that is not the case. So I went to Equal Opportunity and he got severely counselled and that was back in 1987. <laughs> and then I went to a place that I really loved. I left Canberra and I went to Telfer up in the Great Sandy Desert. I did everything I could, special projects, mine geology, exploration, green fields, brown fields, production lease, and I just loved the area. I loved the small mining town community stuff. I loved it. I was on a mission to find a god. That's Telfer, by the way, before it started getting mine, a great ore deposit. That's my only vision, the only vision I had, <laughs> was to be part of a geological team, run a geological team, where we're out there finding great stuff. However, five years in Telfer, I knew I had to diversify, so I went from a Proterozoic terrain towards an Archean terrain. I moved to, to Kalgoorlie. However, I was 28 at the time, and I thought, well, I've got to, I've got to keep this in line. This is where I was in this arm change position. I thought, yeah, I want to continue to be a geologist. I'm in Kalgoorlie. I'll have kids. I'll have them quick so I can go back out there and work. So one became three and I had three in 14 months. I wore that dress for about three years. I mean, three months. <laughs> so there we were, a so-called happy family. Me, the first husband. <laughs> and the, th the reason why I keep going, my three boys. So there I was in Kalgoorlie on task. I was even doing a correspondence course in business while managing the three kids. Happy family? You've got to be joking. <laughs> I was kapowed. I was in a situation of forced change. It was like a mass extinction event. <laughs> Just like the KT extinction event, but a bit, bit worse actually. Everything I knew change was taken out from underneath me. Not to admit everything else. No family over here. No financial support. He didn't give me any of that. It was the end of phase one, I was 30 years of age. So I had to begin life as a single mum. I had to rise from the ashes. <laughs> and I had four things, four things that I could rely on. My three kids and my education. So just a bit of geology here. With a mass extinction event, after a mass extinction event, new environments, new opportunities, new niches, a whole heap of things. Because that's what happens after a mass extinction event, see? See how the <laughs> increases? <laughs> and here's the scientist in me. I thought I'd create a graph. <laughs> An x-axis is my age, and the y-axis are arbitrary figures. Overall, I just want to show the positive line of regression. <laughs> so there I am, in the wilderness. Believe you me, I was in the wilderness. I read every self-help book. I went to kinesiologists, psychologists, you name it. I tried to, tried to get myself out of it. <laughs> I was there in the beginning when the first 15 machines came in. <laughs> and if you've got one, and you made the pavlova, that was 30 dozen eggs that I used to make sure that the recipe worked. <laughs> there was a period there for about six years which I called the well syndrome. Because even though I had these um, confidences and I had these talents and what have you, I tried everything. I was even up like 10 metres in this crane counting things because I just wanted to find self-worth. The Wells Syndrome is that every time I found something, something said, some force of nature said, no, go back down. You need to start all over again. Fortunately, I had a band of mothers who um, were around me to actually say, go back to uni. And the only thing I could do was teach, really, because I had to look after the kids. So I went back to uni and then I found a job at school, the school that I'm currently st at, and that's Kent Street Senior High School. However, I started school, but in the state where our economic drivers are and the resources, minerals and energy, who's teaching resources? No, there was only four schools in the state. And I thought, this is ludicrous. 
So I started to arm myself. I was going to make a change. There's no way that this state was not going to have rocks on the list. <laughs> so phase two is my, this rebuilding phase where um, it's all about education and how I was going to bring it into the education system. So I had plans, I put strategies in place, I put tools, I built networks. I was going to break down the barriers, or I am, I think, breaking down the barriers between education and, and industry. So I went from armed to initiated, working with my environment to initiate new, new opportunities. And so this is one of the first models I produced. It's a little bit of what um, has been said today. Get it into schools, get, get it into the lower schools, which is seven, eight, nine, ten. Empower them, embrace the kids, show them pathways, career opportunities and get them into tertiary, get them into skilled tertiary, education, STEM, science, technology, engineering and maths, what we need here in our state. Come on. Centre of Excellence for Resources. I'm in my second time now trying to lobby with the government to actually put a centre of resources excellence. And thank you to all of you out there who helped me um, in putting letters of support. Apparently it's still sitting on the DG's desk. So I, I came in with my centre of resources. I've got my passion, obviously, I love my rocks. I'm quite diverse, I'm quite good at a few things. I've got a vision. I've brought in my lifelong learning. I've got lots of industry and community associations, which you'll see as it goes through. And my strategy is to have it from primary school all the way up, teaching about rocks, teaching about what's in the rocks, whether it's water, oil or minerals. And I have been stemming. I've been embracing, I'm making sure it's cross-curricular. None of this go to maths and go to English. Uh, my students will vouch for me to a, a strong degree that I teach all disciplines within the context thematically approached. So my main job now is to help the students arm themselves. And it's about making them believe in what they actually can be capable of and make them understand that they can transfer their skills from maths into science, into English, into technology and have role models that they're working with. And this is what Claire was just on about. That's part of the practices I do as well. We need good leaders for next year. Well, not next year, the, the next couple of years. <laughs> One of the things that I have done is I've collaborated with Chevron and um, I've put a whole new program in. I've lobbied with, this, with my school. I've got fantastic support from my school. Four hours a week for my year 10s. I, I've got, I designed it in such a way that I'm, I'm the CEO of a, a natural gas company called Kent Street Petroleum and I have... <laughs> I have business units. I've got five business units all named after um, nearly extinct animals or protected animals on Barrow Island and they work in teams. And what they say is, say, Miss, we don't go to class in Chevron, we go to work. <laughs> and this is, I'm flicking through this because I think it's really important because a lot of the values that we've been talking about, this is what the kids from Chevron, my year 10s actually say. And as you can have a look, um, it's the values that are the most important. I say to them, it's not knowledge. Don't worry about the knowledge. Knowledge will come. The knowledge comes when you're confident. And the knowledge comes when you know your values. So I think it's pretty cool that at the age of 14, 15, they're already given that environment. You put them into the right environment, they start recognising this. I work with community in 2011 through my association with the Australian Institute of Ge Geoscientists, I met Alison Morley and through Alison I met Sabona. And I created my own Kin Street Women in Mining. I do it biannually and this is last year's. We had 40 women, I thank you again, the 40 women, I know some of them are here, that came to my school and 80 students and we had a wonderful day. And just yesterday one of the primary school kids came up to me that I teach and she said, and I, she, we are talking about the um, this event and I said to her, Isabel, why did you like it so much? And she said, because the women all liked what they were doing and I can see what they were doing. So having these positive role models within the classroom or doing these day, day works 
actually does set that seed in their mind to empower them to act and do high performance. So watch out for 2015, it's going to be even bigger. Sabina. <laughs> okay, I work together with Curtin University and getting the um, primary schools in our feeder district, getting them um, resources as well. I take my students, I take them around the world, I take them to volcanoes, Hawaii, New Zealand, and I even managed to cross this one off the bucket list when Madame Palais was spewing her lava into the Pacific Ocean. The captain of the boat said, sit down, and I just couldn't contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> it truly was a magical experience. I do interstate. I've run about 33 field trips. I go from Hopetown to Shark Bay with the students. And, of course, thank you to all the mines that have supported me along the way. Um, Western Areas, Rio, Cliffs, Evolution. And it keeps going. Come on. Talisman. Talisman, sorry. <laughs> um, Luzanac, Iluka. And this is before Catlin Creek got going, so. And of course, just this year, um, Samphire. And of course, I've, I've had the golden ticket twice I've been able to go to Barrow Island. Varanus were the, the only time the students were able to go there before it blew up. <laughs> and Dongra, AWE. So, the kids at Ken Street have had a really good awareness, but this needs to be throughout all our schools so that our state in the future, over the next 20 years, has got homegrown talent to run our great mining companies and our mineral companies and our energy companies. So I get, I, I get asked this all the time, why don't you go back to geology? As I said, don't get me wrong, I could quite easily go out bush on a rig. But when I get feedback like this from my past students, I've highlighted um, some areas there for you. It means I'm making a difference, I'm doing, well, I'm giving them confidence, so to speak. I'm arming them so that they can have the confidences to make change for themselves. And now I'm not finished, not yet anyway. So, upon reflection, thanks Sabina, I realised I found that God a long time ago. And the resource isn't gold or heavy mineral sands or natural gas. It's our kids, the kids of this state. So it's just some of the things I do. I even got the chief scientist or the former chief scientist on the side. So these are just some of the kids that have gone on from my class. Oh, this is where it's going to lag a bit. Um, gone on from my class, gone on to tertiary education to do geosciences, engineering, environmental, metallurgy, and there's few. This should be going quicker, but it's lagging a bit. So I get about 30 to 40% graduation rate moving on, mainly into Curtin University, because that's in our backyard, going on into tertiary um, to do these. So I think what it does show is that if you have got leaders in your school that do or understand how the resources industry does work, it, it does make a change to these young minds. Yeah, sorry about this. It doesn't lag when I do this on my computer. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, she's doing environmental biology. Help. <laughs> He's at Rio now. He did hydrogeology. That's the executive director of the Western um, Ge Geological Survey of WA. And she's somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, she hasn't finished yet. <laughs> oh, gosh. Right, so I've even got some of them 
coming back and help me out. Next year I'm going to the land of fire and ice, Iceland that is, and land of Vikings. And three of them are coming along as mentors. So I want to just keep feeding the system. So environmental biology, ge geology, geology, and geology and geophysics. They're all third and fourth years. Some of them have already gone out and are working. Tara's with Fortescue. Um, she's not finished yet, but she's a fieldie at De Gruza, Melissa. She's on Baker Hughes working on a rig, a platform of um, the Atwell Osprey, I think, off Barrow Island. He's um, third year and with Rio. He's third year mining engineering at Wasm, and by the way, that's my son. <laughs> and this is Denzel. He was the, he's an indigenous boy. Oh, he's working up there as well with Rio, um, or somewhere related with Rio. But um, he was the one that came up to me when he was in year nine and said, Miss, are you going to teach geology? And that was it, and that's what got the ball rolling. He comes, he's helping me now. My new initiative is to actually start disengaged uh, a program or disengaged Aboriginal youth at my school to help supplement this. I'm looking for help, by the way. Helping, so I haven't been able to do this by myself. Obviously, my school totally supports me, but I've also enlisted some great networks, parents. There's Denzel up the top there. And there's the list there all these people so far, but it's the beginning. So where am I going to now? I'm 48 and now I'm in phase three. So phase two is finished. Phase two finished when my twins, James and Daniel, finished school last year. So there, there's the mass extinction event. There was the growth and development and setting up the, the pilot, I guess, at my school. That was all those changes, those armed into initiated. And I forgot to mention my second marriage, but that was just a tsunami. <laughs> but I have to say, I have to say that he did help me get into teaching. So, but the rest, well, it was hard work. <laughs> and I initiated that change. <laughs> so here I am. I'm wrapping up now. There's, this is my family. <laughs> help. Okay, so there's my family. <laughs> and it's growing. Because I've got the girlfriends starting to come in. <laughs> and that's Chantelle. She's with Rio. She's a mechanical engineer. So, no matter what people tell you, words and ideas can change the world. And that's what I had in those days of wilderness. All I had to do was look at words and change and I wanted to make change. I needed to find a pathway for myself to survive for my children. And all those down there were the class of 2012. In that, in that year I got first, third, fourth and fifth in the state for earth and environmental sciences. So it was pretty awesome. It's going to be hard to beat again. So, oh shit, oh sorry. <laughs> So this is my, phase three is based totally on this, getting year seven to ten STEM. So an extra four hours a week, science, technology, English, maths, thematically, contextually set, starting with dinosaurs in year seven <laughs> and ending with Chevron in year ten and iron ore and the rest in the middle. So there's my school. I will continue to do resources and geoscience literacy. And I just want to show you what some of my students are truly capable of. There's no sound. <laughs> A world where ideas can be shared and further enlightened. Where small businesses can gather together and work even with the biggest corporations. Where people's ideas can be shared freely where stakeholders are respected and trusted. Where every worker can keep his principles to heart and can take pride in his work. Where oil and gas can be given to the community only using the best and fastest methods. A world where carbon-based energy can be brought to your home without damaging the natural environment. 
where people develop as much as the technology, the progress is made exponentially, where the right people can excel at what they do best. Kent Street Petroleum wants to bring you this world and more. KSP, we walk the talk to ensure your energy needs are met. So this is why education needs to change. We need to move away from the 1970s approach of traditionalist classroom style where the kids are sitting in desks with textbooks. I don't use textbooks. I hate textbooks. They're full of misconceptions. And I'll get really, um, oh, what's the word? I'll get hammered for it. <laughs> but I still do it anyway. I use Twitter. I use Twitter as my main source of information. I don't follow Justin Bieber or Kim Kardashian. I follow the University of Iceland and Volcanoes National Park. <laughs> so, a rock ain't just a rock. It is so much more. The rock for me has been the mould, the pathway, the foundation which I've been able to marry two careers together that I really love. Girls, please stand. Conformity is the jailer of freedom, the enemy of growth. These are my girls who I teach. And um, it's really important that we embrace their diversities and we show them the way, give them the confidences so they can be the leaders of the future. I'll leave you with one note. If you're not feeling good today or tomorrow or the next day and you don't like the job that you're doing, embrace the confidences that you have. What is your rock? And make that change. Thank you. I don't think anyone here in the room will disagree with me when I say that I'm really proud to award... Oh, now, I bought a tissue for Susie, but I think I'm going to need it myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want, I'm really proud to announce the 2014 Wimwar Award for Outstanding Initiative in Promoting and Supporting Women in Mining to Susie Urban Act. <laughs> I think Susie's told us a lot about her already. I've got a whole page full of information about the amazing things that Susie has, does and I think we all saw enough today that I don't need to read out the whole page. But, um, yeah, I think Susie's an absolutely amazing role model and I'm really glad she came and told us her story today. Thanks, it's Susie. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> 